only guy I think on the roster that didn't get in uh, last week. What uh, what was up with that? He's dealing with a certification issue with the NCAA, so we're waiting on uh, the NCAA is hearing about that. I'm going to wait and see, but he's a part of our family. We're ready to get started with him. Is, is it something that, that you're concerned about uh, that won't get resolved before the well, season? I think or? always that when, a, when a CSA issue you're concerned, but I think it'll get resolved. Yeah. Okay. When you guys uh, watch the first tape, or watch, watch the tape of the first game, what did you end up thinking? What was the takeaway? I like the way we played overall as a team. I thought we were better in the exhibition as opposed to in practice. Uh, I think what happens in practice teams, they, they know what you're doing. Guys cheat the plays a little bit, but I thought we did a pretty good job on both ends of the floor. Um, obviously, you have to improve your spacing. Um, post sitting with your big guys in the post, making solid moves, being aggressive in the home blocks. Outside of David Crabbe, which obviously he's a solid player in the post. we got to get other guys being aggressive and score the ball. But overall, I thought we did a good job as a team. I thought we played hard from start to finish. And normally in games like that, they can get out of hand where a lot of shots are being taken out of control shots. And it's, it's kind of a fun time. But I thought our guys stuck to the script and did a good job of finishing the game. Yeah, what would you say maybe specifically was better that you saw in game than in practice? Well, I think always in practice is always tough just because of the fact that you're going against each other. Uh, in most cases, guys know what you're doing in practice. Uh, if I call a play on practice, I like to think the other team know what we're doing in practice. So they kind of cheat the plays. And that's fine because that's what happens in games. Teams scout your personnel, know what you like to do. They take things away. So. You have to do a great job of executing and practice, and I think our guys uh, up until the exhibition game did a good job of really locking in, being tougher in practice, mentally tougher, executing what we're trying to do. I thought it carried over in the exhibition game. Sure. What if, I mean, defensively, some of the guys said that that's, that's what you guys kind of harped on after watching the film. Yeah. Is that yeah. right? I thought we did a good job to fit. Now, I, I thought we did a poor job of boxing out and getting rebounds. We did a better job in the second half. Especially Jabari, I thought he did a great job of going to get rebounds, and he's a guy that should get six to eight at night. His size and athleticism, but other than that, I just thought, you know, those long rebounds, especially when the team shoot 27 three-point shots, most cases they come off long. So our guards did a great job. You watch on film, we talk about corralling the rebounds. We got five white jerseys, that's great, but the long ones, you know, our guards have to keep those guys at bed and get those long rebounds. But I thought our positioning was good to get the rebounds, but again, when the team shoots so many threes. You have to be prepared to sure. get those long rebounds. You know, I guess after all the stress and importance on rebounding, to have that kind of come up in the game has got to be a little bit, a little bit frustrating. Not at all. Not for me. That's why you play exhibition games. Sure. Right? And a great thing for me with exhibition games and scrimmages, it gives you a chance to go back to the lab, so to speak, and you watch family and talk to your player about these are the things that we stress. That's corrected. We don't want this to happen again. So for me, it's always great to be able to go through some, you see it in live games, and then to go back and try to correct it. Because once November 14th hit, it all counts. You really wanted to play that game, right? Yes. Yeah, that was an yes. important year to get a yes. second exhibition game. It is. I, I, and the reason for us is now moving forward, it could change. You can get a scrimmage in there. But with a new team, a new style, new coaching staff, you want to get those games. And more than anything, you want to be under the lights to play in those games. Sometimes the scrimmage is behind closed doors, and all of a sudden you get out in the lights, and you're exposed to the fans and the atmosphere. You have new guys, or guys that are unproven, they're playing on that stage. It can be frightening for some guys out the gate. So for us to get those exhibition games, I think it's great for our guys because you have so many guys that are playing a new role. What do you really want to see out of them in the next one, the one coming up? Well, that's just you know, the thing we talk about: tightening up screws. You know, every paying attention to detail, doing the little things consistently. Consistent with your box out, spreading the floor, Wayne spreading where it's supposed to go, taking care of the ball. Uh, 13 turnovers in the exhibition game is not bad. We try to get 10 or less throughout the season, so making good decisions with the basketball. Weak side defense, continue to do the things we need to do. Because I think if you're strong with your defense on the strong side of the ball, you got a chance to be good. I think if your weak side defense is good, you got a chance to be great. So we got to continue improving those areas. You know, I thought it was interesting what you said, that you go into a game anticipating that the other team already knows the plays that you're running. How do you expect your players to adjust to those situations where the other team might actually have done a really good job scouting and does know the play you're going to run? Well, the thing about it in practice, again, I'll call it in practice, and both teams know it. Right. So now the defense can cheat the play a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now with that being said, you still have to be to execute offensively. And the one thing we talk about, if you break down an individual play, then that means you get into the rim making a play. So that what we talk about in practice, try your best to execute that play. We talk about 
a lot of things in practice, but the biggest thing we talk with our perimeter guys is how to get open on the wings. Mm -hmm. you, most teams, when they run the offense, they go to each wing. Mm -hmm. They try to hit a wing and execute the offense. In practice, we try to take away the wing, and offense, we try to get that wing catch mm -hmm. to start the offense. So we spend a lot of time, I think if you can get catches where you want the ball, you got a chance to be successful. Yeah. And ultimately, you got a chance to run your offense the way you want to. Looking at that, the way the team functioned with Tyrone at the point, the way they functioned with, with Sam at the point, how do you grade those two? Well, I thought they both did a good job. Uh, and for us, at, you know, I don't think either one of those guys are a traditional point guard where they grew up from day one being a point all their lives. Those guys can score the ball. They can make plays off the dribble. They can shoot the basketball. So for us, it's put them in position as a staff so they can be successful. Both can penetrate and get in the lane. Get in the lane, penetrate. You got layups taken. You got pull-ups taken. You got threes taken. Find your guys. So we spent a lot of time with those guys making decisions, spared up with guys are really pressuring to be able to jump stop and find guys. So again, for me, those guys have never been traditional ones all their lives. They've been guys that have been able to make plays. So you don't want to take that away, but they also have to be good decision makers. Is it going to be a case where there really won't be a true "quote unquote" starter that you'll kind of have them both in at a point? Uh, you'll you'll bring Sam in to kind of change the pace, move Tyrone to the two. Uh, is it going to kind of evolve throughout the season? Well, I think I've been around even when I played in the Big Ten and my coach in the Big Ten. There were quite a few programs like you see D. Brown and Darren Williams that play. You got two guys that can make decisions on the floor. You got a chance to be good. The more ball handlers and decision makers you have on the floor you got a chance to be a pretty good team. So that means that minimize your turnovers on the floor and enhance your profile as decision makers and playmakers. So for me, the more ball handlers and decision makers, the better off we are. You ever had a 6'5 point guard before? Uh, no, I don't think I've had a 6'5 point guard. We've got guys 6'3", 6'4", that can sure. make plays. And again, size is the main thing. If you can't play, if you can play, then it's great. But I think in Tyrone's case, he knows how to use his size. He knows how to use his body around the rim. And he can make decisions. You bring a different style of play to the program here. Do you often wonder how it's going to translate from practice to a game, and how do you feel like it did translate in this first exhibition? Well, for me, it's not necessarily wondering whether or not it'll work because it's been proven. I played in the system, so to speak. I've coached in it. I think the key is having fresh legs, and I think that equals fresh minds, and I think they go hand in hand. You have to practice hard because if you don't, if you're not able to duplicate game speed in practice, you're struggling in games. So you have to play at a high level of intensity, whether it's physical without fouling, playing hard but not out of control. So now when you get in game situations, because you want it to be heightened when you get in the game, so you assume it's that way. So when you're actually playing in the games, you're ready for it. Are you seeing that consistent effort in practice? So far. So far. I mean, I, I will say they worked hard. Yeah. Were you worried about pushback? Because sometimes new coaches come in. I mean, you're obviously pushing hard. I don't, those things I don't worry about. You're hired to do a job. Yeah. You do your job. No, I don't consume myself with those type of things. I don't. Because that's time and energy wasted. We try to build a program. We're ultimately trying to win a champion. And you're wasting time on negativity. It slows you up.